Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC. Now, I know you weren't expecting to see my face again today, but as it happens, something landed today, which I'm sure you've probably seen from the thumbnail. And I think with some things here on YouTube, the early bird really does catch the worm. But also, Mrs. Morelander was out this evening and I thought I'd make some content, because why not? We're here today to look at the newly released Casio G-Shock GAB2100. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, this is weird. You've already had that watch and you sent it back because you said it was too small. Now, if you don't want to hear this bit, feel free to use this timestamp and you can go on to the uh, the content where we'll, we'll, we will have a look at this. But if not, then, you know, so long story short, I did send this back originally because I just thought it was too small. It's too small for my wrist. I have a seven and a half inch wrist and it just felt too small. That was pretty much it. But I think in a way, I mean, and I'll, I'll leave a link to the content so that you can see it. I still stand by the fact that this is a very, very nice watch. It's a very handsome watch. There's a few things that have probably changed, which I, I definitely will change, and mainly that's the strap. But so anyway, I'm waffling a little bit. But I made some content on the Casio uh, King. Love this watch. But it was my first square, and I hadn't had any other squares, so I hadn't got another one to compare it to. So I picked up this watch which is the DW uh, 5610 which hopefully you can see there's a massive difference between the two of them now having worn this and been wearing it around <laughs> we actually realized that the DW 10 is actually smaller than the Casio and I got used to a smaller watch and thought well there's a newer version with some features or especially one feature on it which I prefer over the original so I thought I'd pick one up you know I'm a humble man I like to admit when I'm wrong and yeah so pick this one up now what as I usually do I'll turn the camera around so that we can take a closer look uh, at this watch while I'm doing that if you do enjoy this content at any point then please feel free to hit the like subscribe and share um, it makes a massive deal to my channel, uh, as it does with most YouTubers, uh, it really does make a difference. Um, it helps us to understand the type of content that you enjoy watching, um, and it helps with the algorithm. So if you do choose to hit like, subscribe and share, then I'd like to say thank you at this point. But for now, let's turn the camera around so that we can take a closer look. Okay, so here we have the GAB2100. Now, just in case you're unsure at this point, this is pretty much the same watch as the GA2100. This is newly released. It quite literally came out today, um, or at least, uh, you know, it arrived here today. But as far as the specs are concerned, as far as, far as the vast majority of the features of the GAB2100, they're exactly the same as the GA2100. So the Casio came out, you know, a few years back and I mean, I wouldn't bet my house on it. However, I could probably say that it has become one of Casio's most successful watches, um, dubbed the Casio because of, um, you know, some of the uh, the, the features, the, the the hexagonal, hexagonal, octagonal, sorry, face, uh, and the, the the look and feel of it close to the uh, to the Royal Oak. Um, now, um, as I mentioned, pretty much every single thing is the same so i'll go through these quickly as far as the dimensions are concerned uh, from lug to lug it comes in at 48 millimeters from side to side across the face it comes in at 45 millimeters it's actually a very nice slim casio uh, g-shock uh, and it comes in at 11.8 millimeters now i do have some other watches that i'm going to keep probably bringing in and out but just to give you an idea so here is uh, the casio king which really is, you know, this is this is a massive watch. It's probably got an extra seven or eight millimeters on this one. When you put them next to each other as well, you can see, I think this one comes in at 17 millimeters, whereas this one is just 11.8. Um, but size-wise, um, I think as far as recent watches that I've owned that are certainly very similar, uh, we've got 
the uh, the B sorry the GBD 200, which again has probably got a very similar sized face. I, I know this is this this you know this is fully analog, um, but again you know very similar in size. Uh, and then also here, this is that watch that I mentioned at the beginning. This is the one that really made me appreciate the fact that it's okay to have a smaller G-Shock watch and and, and appreciate uh, a smaller form factor in a G-Shock, which kind of made me realize I, I, in my haste I probably shouldn't have sent my original one back however I'm glad that this one is out because as I mentioned there are some features on this that I actually prefer now get, getting back to it so uh, resin case resin strap um, it does have a stainless steel back on here um, and then if you can see here so down the side if I can I can actually pull this from, from the side so this is the resin uh, outer and then on the inside here this uh, this small black ring that goes off the outside uh, of the the back uh, the, the steel backer um, that is the uh, carbon core so if I can get this just at the right angle there you can see that this is one of their carbon core so that uses carbon fiber in there to make sure that it is as tough but also as light as they could possibly they could possibly make it now as far as light credentials it really is you know it's it's a very small watch uh, and the the weight of that watch watch reflects that and it only it comes in at a um, a very small 52 grams um, what we uh, as far as the face is concerned it has uh, what I consider a reasonably nice face you've got the hour indices and then you can actually see so the, there's a there's a small internal bezel on the inside there where you can see that there all are if I can bring this in close enough and we can get it in focus that there are small um, minute indices in there as well this dial here on the left hand side, this shows you what functions, so there are three or four functions on here and as you go through them with the mode button here down in the left hand corner, um, this will then turn so that you can see which, um, which mode that you're in. There's also some letters around the outside as well which are very difficult to read. Um, I mean that's that they're just very difficult to read um, but you kind of get you do get a digital readout on here that does tell you which section that or which modes you're using now just my look this is going to swing around there as I'm going through this so I think what we'll do is we'll go through the modes now but what you can do is you can see on this small screen here you can see the modes in there so as I go through the modes first one on there is world times and you can see that that little dials turned around um, and then you can you can change through the different different cities um, depending on you know where you want that dual time to be press it again you've got your stopwatch stopwatch is very simple you know you can start the stopwatch if you want to do any lap times then you can press uh, the adjust button here at the top and it will set your lap times you can see that it says first there there you can see it says number two number three and so on and then you've got stop and reset and that will do that for you next one on there is a uh, countdown timer so the countdown timer on this actually comes in at 10 minutes by by default if you want to adjust that you keep your finger down on the adjust button but it's almost got like a two-stage thing on here so you keep it down you'll see it'll say set and then it will make sure that the hands are moved out of the way so you can see the hands have just come down here to about half past seven uh, and if you want to add so you can add minutes uh, with this one or you can take minutes off or you can uh, you can adjust it over so that you can do you can do seconds as well let's I know, let's bump that up to 10 minutes hit that again and then it will reset your hands for you as well to start it you use the start button that will stop your timer stop it and then you can reset as well um, and then the last one on here are alarms. Sorry, just scratch my shoulder for some weird reason then. And so it comes with five independent alarms. You can cycle through those alarm one, two, three, four, and five. And then also that you get with most standard is you get your hourly time signal. You can you can set that on there as well. I really like Casio watches just for the main fact that they have that hourly time signal. I wish all the watch manufacturers did exactly the same. And then last but not least hit your mode button and then it will take you back around and it does the same thing where you have two different tones so as you're going round you hear on that last that last tone that it's a it's more high pitched so that you know that you're back at the beginning 
the information that's displayed here on this bottom screen what's just gone behind that um, the the hour hand there uh, is the seconds but here at the moment I have the date on there oops sorry, wrong button uh, I can put uh, the date on there and then I can also put the dual time so depending on what was the other time uh, that I set on my world time it will show that as a second time in there now one thing that I am so happy to see and I wish this was on more if you do go into the adjust options here you can set your time you can do all of the usual things that you'd expect but there's now the facility on this to put um, your date so that it is in month uh, so that it is in date and then month rather than uh, than the American setup um, yeah so yeah moving on swiftly but everything on here is super simple to change the time you change the time via the LCD display at the bottom once that's then changed your, uh, your your hands will automatically change so that the time is correct on your hands so I know there's been certain G-Shock watches in the past where you've had to set the two separately which has just been an absolute pain because you want to make sure that they're both pretty much identical um, but yeah, so it, it does that and it's it's very good in the way that it does it But I think as far as the watch face is concerned, I'm trying not to get this and the reflection I think it's a very nice watch face. So the back of the face um, almost has a, a, a brushed circular steel so when, when I do that you can see that 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 changes round it's still a plastic back at the back but it's just nice and smooth so that you do get that effect um, although I probably can't get close enough as far as cleanliness in there everything is nice and crisp there's no dust uh, as you'd again as you'd expect from Casio watches there's more information on the back here you can see uh, the module number there at the top you can see that is the GAB 2100 uh, made in Taiwan and then it is also uh, 200 meters or 20 bars of atmospheric pressure so you can dive down if you want to you can dive down up to 200 meters with this if you're concerned about swimming or anything like that you really don't need to worry about these G-Shock watches it was one of the founding reasons that the inventors came up with this you know he dropped his watch he wanted something that would survive a fall from a meter and something that he'd be able to swim with and this this is what they came in fact the g stands for gravity it needs to be able to uh, withstand the fall from a certain height a couple more measurements on here that we haven't touched on yet uh, as far as the, the the strap is concerned it claims that this is a 21.5 millimeter strap uh, which really is is this part here however if you want to get a replacement strap for this generally you do have to go for the Casio ones but what we do have is a nice interchangeable quick release um, the lugs are here to here which comes in at about 16 millimeters and that's that's the important thing about this that although you can see that it goes across the whip there um, it actually stops about there to there there are some pins here on the side or at least these screws they they don't actually hold uh, the straps in there they are pretty much just for show and, and to, to, to keep this on there's a lot of mods that you can do to this um, all of the mods that you could do to the GA 2100 you'll be able to do to the GA 20 to, to the GAB 2100 because it's exactly the same watch. Now, you're probably thinking, what are these two new features? And if you can see here, if I can get close enough, come on. Uh, at the top there you can see that it says Tough Solar. Now I think this is probably one of the biggest things when these came out that a lot of G-Shock fans said why isn't it on there. But now it has Tough Solar on there so whether it's the sun or whether it's uh, an artificial light, uh, any light source that hits this face will, uh, will help to recharge the battery. The battery in this as far as rechargeability or, or at least how much life it's got in it can have up to from a full charge so if you were to leave this out in the sun so they could gain a full charge you'd be able to get 18 months worth of battery out of this if it was left in a drawer or not in the sun <laughs> um, 
but then if you did take it out you'd be able to you know just if, if you're concerned about it being low in fact there are some instructions that come with it where's the box gun here's the box let me grab this uh, so you get oh, nearly dropped it. You get the usual kind of Casio tin. You know these are great, uh, but there's some extra instructions in there if if you're concerned that it it is getting a bit lower if if it's been in a drawer for a while. But here across the bottom there are some indicators. Th these letters here are indicators of, of of whether it does need a charge. Um, but generally, you know, you can just take it outside, keep it on your wrist, and you know you're good to go. Um, obviously, if it's partially covered, then, you know, it's not going to go as well. But, as I say, you know, you can use artificial light. But that's that's the main one, um, certainly, that I've made this purchase. The second one is just underneath there, in blue, it says Bluetooth. So it does have some quasi-smart watch features. However, and it's a, it's a big however, with a capital H, I mean, don't expect this to be a smartwatch. It really isn't. So some of the features that you can get from Bluetooth, don't even think about footsteps or answering calls or changing your music, none of that. What the Bluetooth will allow you to do is uh, features like find my phone. So you can press a button on here and your phone will um, make a tune, even if your phone is on silent. Um, the Casio app on your mobile phone will make a, a, a you know a melody so that you can find your phone. Um, there's things on there like so. I think at the moment, as far as time zones, there's 48 different countries that you can use. Whereas if you use the app that it will connect to, it's up to 300 um, cities around the world that you can then you know tailor it for those. Um, also, auto time zones. So if you fly from the UK to Venezuela. I don't know how I chose that, but anyway, um, as soon as you land and you, your phone recognises that you're in a different time zone, it will update your watch. Um, also, auto updates as well. So as far as accuracy, I think it's to like something like 15 seconds difference, possibly um, every um, every month. It does use a, a Japanese quartz internal on this, um, but it will make sure that you that the uh, the phone will make sure, connected via Bluetooth to your watch, that it's always up to date with the exact time that your phone is getting off the internet. To be fair, if they'd have just not added this Bluetooth stuff, I, I just don't think it's that much of a selling point. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'd certainly love to hear down in the comments, are you buying it so that you can get this Bluetooth stuff? Or are you buying it for the fact that it's got those two words there with tough solar? For me, they could have left the um, they could have left the Bluetooth on here and just added Tough Solar, and that would have been perfect. Now, there's a few different variants of this. So this is the black version, but this black version, as you can see, so there's there's a red, there's a gold, and a blue highlight there. Really, kind of uh, embodies a lot of those '90s, those early '90s um, G-Shock watches. This, this is the exact same reason that I went for this. There is a fancy orange, uh, yellow version, there's a green version, I think there's a blue version, and a completely all black. If you want to go completely all black, you can go with this. So all of these extra uh, little bits on there are black as well. I think it has a negative display. And then you've got some nice bright loom here um, on the hands. One thing that I haven't touched on is up in the top right hand corner there, you can press the light button and there's a little LED that will um, you know, kind of fire it across the face. Now it's not one of these dual style LEDs that helps to backlight anything or anything like that. It really is just a small LED here that faces across the screen to help illuminate on there. You can also decide in the settings how long you want that light to stay on. You can either have it on for a second or you can have it on for three seconds. I think when it comes on, yeah, it's, it's on there for, for three seconds to start off with. But you've got metal buttons all the way around. These are really nice. They're slightly recessed so that you're not going to hit them by accident. One of the things, I mean, if you watch my first review of this, it's a very handsome watch. And I, I still do believe that it is a very good looking watch. I still am not impressed by the strap. The strap on this is possibly one of Casio's worst straps. They could have chosen so many different watches. So here we're going back to that, uh, the, the 
what was this the the dw oops <laughs> the dw5610 this has the same strap it's just honestly really casio you could have really put a nicer strap on this don't get me wrong it keeps it on your wrist that's the one advantage that i can say about it for me i have a seven and a half inch wrist it's just it's just about an inch too short half inch on each end if you were to take um the king and i'm trying to get these so that the lugs are roughly at the same point you can see the king is about a centimeter extra on each oh sorry about that on each end um we've also got what other watches have we got here We've got this one as well, which is the that's the GB two hundred. Again, the GB two hundred is probably a good centimeter. And again, I'm trying to get the lugs so that they're close to each other, but it's still just a little bit short. Now, I am going to make some follow-up content to this because there are going to be some changes that I'm going to make to this. At first, I didn't want to make any changes, but I think just by changing the strap. I can make this. I've already got over the fact that the face is smaller than the type of watches that I go for, but I think with a change to the strap, I think this will become a watch that I'll be very happy with. Now, as I say, I am man enough to admit when I'm wrong, and having spent the last six months with a smaller watch than the original GA2100, putting the GAB2100 on my wrist it certainly doesn't feel as small as I felt the first one the GA2100 is as I've already mentioned you know they're exactly the same watch they really are exactly the same watch there's just those extra tough solar and Bluetooth features added to them now I'd love to hear in the comments below are you going to pick up one of these? And if you are going to pick up one of these, is it because, you know, it, it's the watch that broke the internet? The, the Casio really has become a modern day classic. Or is it because it now has tough solar? Because, well, I mean, option three, is it because it has Bluetooth? I guarantee no one's picking one up because it's got Bluetooth. Take it off. But anyway, you know, waffle. Who doesn't like to waffle? The Morlander loves to waffle. So what I'll do is I'll bring this to a close. Um, I'll leave some links in the description below. I'll see if I can find some links for this um, so that you can see more from G-Shark, from Casio, from the uh, from the GAB2100. Um, yeah, I'll leave those links below. I'll leave some of my social media links as well. But for now, stay safe, stay Morlander, and stay EDC.